Bakugan has been pumping out giant monsters for about 10 collective years now. And in that time, there have only been about 22 female Bakugan by my count. This is a deeply unfortunate imbalance, especially in a universe of hundreds of unique and interesting monsters. I think all the Lady Bakugan deserve some attention for once. But it's a top 10 list, so like men typically do, I'm gonna ignore half of women and rank the rest on an arbitrary scale based on subjective value. Shout out to girl Bakugan. Gotta be one of my favorite genders of Bakugan. Hi, I'm Jet Kuso, and today we are ranking the top 10 female Bakugan. This was a tough list to create because honestly, despite the low numbers, the female Bakugan that do show up typically make quite an impression. For the most part, I'm gonna just talk about what makes each of these characters and toys cool and unique and special in my eyes. Number 10, Tigrera. Some of you are gonna hate me for ranking a classic character so low on the list, but let's be real, Tigrera is a weird character, cause she wasn't a woman in the original Japanese dub. I only thought about myself, but putting you into danger like that was just me being stubborn. Finish this battle. <gasps> Making rash decisions does have consequences. And now that you understand this, the battle is yours to win! Then you mean? Yes. Being true to yourself. That is the key. Do you understand? <laughs><笑> Don't ask me why they changed it, I have no idea, but this quirk of localization did end up giving us something that uh, deeply amuses me. Despite starting as a perfectly generic, agender looking tiger, the ambiguity that comes along with an animal design disappears as she goes down the Pokemon starter pipeline and evolves into Buff Tigrera. Sorry, Brawn Tigrera. Ah, no, sorry, uh, I meant to say Built Tigrera. Alright, sorry. <laughs> The joke is old already, my bad. Uh, Beef Tigrera is hilarious to me because despite being giant and muscular all of a sudden, they completely stuck to their guns and kept the same voice actress. And good, because there aren't enough depictions of muscular women in media. Blade Tigrera reporting for duty! The toy even has a built-in Get Swole feature. Check out those lats. Whoa. Number 9, Blitzfox. Blitzfox features heavily in Bakugan Evolutions as the partner of Athena Mond, an unexpected but welcomed fan-favorite character. I haven't watched most of that season, so I can't speak much to Blitzfox as a character, but I can and will speak about the toy. Her toy is an example of everything Gen 2 of Bakugan gets right about creature design. Compared to Tigrero, we can see just how far Bakugan has come in terms of actually showing the creatures the toy is supposed to represent. No manual parts, yet perfectly evocative and quite cool despite being a pretty simple design mechanically. She only has one toy sculpt, but a wide variety of color treatments, and she looks good in every single one of them. And of course you're all weaves, so you can already tell that Blitzbox is based on the traditional folkloric creature from East Asian myth, Ninetales. It's my hope future Bakugan will use even more traditional Japanese yokai as inspiration, like Pikachu and Mr. Mime. Number 8, Monaris. Monaris is only on the list because this Pyrus Monaris was my very first Bakugan. I make no attempt to conceal my biases. She still rolls just fine, and I remain quite fond of the design. There aren't really any Bakugan in Gen 2 with the same design sensibility as Monaris. Basically all of the designs from Battle Planet and onwards seem mostly inspired by kaiju, mythology, and actual animals. But Battle Brawlers took a lot more cues from its genre contemporaries, primarily Yu-Gi-Oh! 
Monaris is more at home among the ranks of Dark Magician Girl and Cyber Harpy Lady than the ranks of Pyravian and Phaedrus. Yes, I looked up other Yu-Gi-Oh monsters other than Dark Magician Girl for this video. There are only a couple more humanoid characters on this list, and none of them are from the reboot. But I actually like that Spin Master still includes female monster characters, even when the designs don't add any sort of objectifiable appeal, like what Yu-Gi-Oh very clearly takes advantage of. Number 7. Villoc? I'll bet you didn't expect this one. Well, me neither. Actually. Um... Watch closely. This is the power of Ultimate Villoc! Villoc was the main antagonist of Geogon Rising, whose evil plan was to... 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 to destroy... the... the White House? I don't know, okay, I barely watched any of that season, but the Gen 2 villains were all the same to me anyway. Just some generic madman with an evil plan. Villoc isn't any different, and he's a guy, so why is he even on this list? Oh. Actually, never mind. Girl, you're doing great. Tear it up. For some reason, Japanese dub Villoc is a woman, and I do not know why. Usually when you see a gender change in the old American anime, you can blame American marketers because the Japanese dub was produced first. But the Japanese dub of Gen 2 was always released second, so this call was made by the Japanese localizers. But does there need to be a reason for a giant monster to be male or female? Not really! I certainly don't think so, but what it does accomplish is actually making Villoc stand out a little bit against the other reboot antagonists. She's just way more compelling on screen than her male counterpart, and I love it when a non-human character is allowed to be female without needing uh, big eyelashes or blush or pouty lips or really any traditionally feminine features. She's just a big scary monster and that's fine. Good for her. Geogon Gatekeep Girl Boss. <laughs> Number six, Sirenoid. Sirenoid is pretty cool. She's like a, like a mermaid. Whoa. Technically, sirens in Greek myth are supposed to be like weird hot birds, I guess. But I mean, Harpus exists. But don't worry, I'm on it. Thunderstorm. <laughs> nah. The thing that really makes Sirenoid special is the musical accompaniment written by Neil Parfit, which creates this intimidating, haunting, beautiful aura. She's mysterious. You don't know what she's capable of. And then she kills Preus. Come, Preus. Come closer. Do not be afraid of the water. But it hasn't been an hour since lunch! Oh, no! Once he's set foot in the water, there's no turning back. His fate is now sealed. Or at least the show makes you think that Preus got sent the Doom Dimension for a minute until the twist. But she's probably the most effective of any of the Bakugan on this list at actually being kind of scary. Her toy is one of the more accurate ones from the first season, and all in all, she's just a very effective antagonist. Number 5, Fenica. Cutest Bakugan of all time. Oh my god. The ears, her little tails, her little nose. Ah! Okay, anyway, so she's basically- Oh wait, no, there's another one! Oh my god, look at the tiny little feet. Look at her tiny body. Fedica is one of the trash Bakugan from Trash Island. You know, the arc where the brawlers lose their best friends to the consequences of war, then adopt a bunch of homeless people? Fenica is one of those homeless people, and she's sassy. Fenica! All of the treasures here belong to me! 
Got that, Sharktar? A classic prissy princess type, which was very fun and new, and I really enjoyed the dynamic she had with Leah. She's a fun character, but her toy, oh my god! Silly part of the video. Number four, Wavern. Something you need to know about me is that when I was but a lad, a young smudge of a boy collecting Bakugan, I would intentionally trade away any Bakugan I had that weren't Pyrus or Darkus. But there was one character that made such an impression on me that I kept the most accurate version of her toy that existed to this day. Wavern was the sister of the big bad villain man Naga, who proves that the root of all of the universe's problems is the imagined oppression of white people. But also, Wavern was Drago's girlfriend. She's really cool and her design is super unique with its smooth exterior and rounded fins. You might not know this, but elements of it were even stolen for How to Train Your Dragon 3. This is a statement of fact, because I have decided that DreamWorks How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World took inspiration from 2007's Bakugan Battle Brawlers. It's true because I say it is. Admittedly, her character does exist almost exclusively to serve the character arcs of men around her, but she does have agency, and she does fight. And she totally kicks butt doing it. And she's very pretty. I think my squishy child self just wanted kaiju romance, because there wasn't any cute Godzilla Mothra fan art back then, and Wavern was basically Mothra. You know what? I say there still aren't enough kaiju romance stories. Come on, Hollywood, get Guillermo del Toro on the phone. He'd do it. Anyway, if your girl is stark white and sacrifices herself to save the known universe before dissolving into pure energy, that's not your girl. That's Matoro of the Toamari. Rest in peace, King. Number three, Elfin. Marucho's partner Bakugan Preyas was and is a fan favorite Bakugan with his wacky antics, weird humor, and unique attribute change gimmick. To follow that up in the second season, the writers decided Marucho's new partner would be Sailor Moon, turned into a frog. I didn't, initially, like Elfin much as a kid. I mean, her design is cute as hell, she uses the same attribute change gimmick as Preyus, she has a bunch of in-theme transformation sequences, and she has a similarly gimmicky, fun-loving, sassy personality. But there was just something about her that my child self couldn't get past. On the wings of wind I strike! Attribute change, darkest! Ah! Oh! What do you know? I feel like a new bag of God! Why? Why would she sound like that? Why does she sound like a 50-year-old smoking- Now disappear! <laughs> Her original toy mold isn't that great either. She looks really nothing like the character, aside from the frog head and the little hands, I guess. But thank goodness all of that changed. After a little while, they either changed her voice actress or changed the voice direction away from sounding like a dying toad and towards something much more classic, you could say. And not long after that, she evolved into Minx Elfin. A great Bakugan design. Super cute, and she looks just like the character. She doesn't have the attribute change wheel in this version of the toy, and the proportions are a little bit weird. But in the anime, they went even harder into the Sailor Moon parody thing. I bring a sweetness and light to your inevitable defeat! I am Aqua's Minx Elfin! Not only does she get a wand, but her trans... I think that's what you... I think that's what the Sailor Moon thing is called. It's a wand, right? Not only does she get a wand, but her transformations get different outfits now. Her darkest look gets a mask. Her Ventus look gets wings. It's clear the animators were having way too much fun with her character by now, but I support that. Unfortunately, Minx Elfin was among the new story of Bakugan that only got released in Japan, so we never saw her again until the highly mediocre-looking mutant Elfin came out in Nictanium Surge. 
There's also Dual Elfin, which looks super lame too, but the point is Elfin is a fun character and Minx Elfin is a good toy. She's in this spot just because of the pure creativity that it takes to get a character like this made and in a show. Number two, Skyrus. Hello, welcome to the video. If Skyrus was your favorite Bakugan character, I'm sorry to hear about the mommy issues. Skyrus is number two because you'd be hard pressed to find a more emotionally resonant character in all of Bakugan. Mr. Hotshot himself, Shun's mom, is dying from illness, and she gives a Bakugan to Shun because she pays attention and supports his hobbies even if she doesn't understand them. And then that Bakugan turns out to be a very sweet lady who takes care of Shun even after his mom passes away, and holy crap, how dare they write this! Then later in the series, the Vestals kidnap Skyrus and Shun goes full John Wick ninja terrorist to try to get her back, and I get it! I get it, man. That's his frickin' mom. Leave her alone, you creeps. God, and then both Skyrus toys that exist are just spectacular. Classic Skyrus is straight up adorable, Storm Skyrus is elegant and evocative, and both have a floppy horn jumping gimmick that almost works. You can hear more about this gimmick in the video about gimmicks though, because that's not the point of this one. The point is, she's a spectacular character, a true force of nature, and part of the best running character story in the entire franchise. But, but, I really can't put her at the top of this list, because ultimately, just like Wavern, she's mostly there to support a male character, which might appeal a lot to people like me, but there's one Bakugan that has managed to surpass and transcend all of those boundaries and generate a fandom all her own. Number one, Pegatrix. On this list, we've had Bakugan that are cute, Bakugan that are powerful, Bakugan that are wise, and Bakugan with a whole lot of toy versions, but none more so than Pegatrix. A Bakugan so beloved, especially by female fans, that she stuck around for four seasons and got more models than any other female Bakugan. Pegatrix, Pegatrix Ultra, AA Pegatrix, AA Pegatrix Ultra, Pegatrix X Gorin Core, Pegatrix X Gorin Ultra, Pegatrix X Gillator, Neo Pegatrix, Nova Pegatrix, I mean, good grief, it's so many friggin' ponies. And that's not even counting faction variations, special treatments, or platinums. I don't think Pegatrix was supposed to have this kind of impact, but beyond having a great design and a wise Skyrus-like personality, they paired her with Leah Venegas, another spectacular female character. Leah's partner was supposed to be Gortheon, but then Pegatrix showed up and the writers were like, what the hell are we doing? No one cares about this frigging gorilla, what are we doing? And then Gortheon just kinda, I love the pony, you love the pony, everyone loves the pony. Who wouldn't love a pony? <laughs> Who wouldn't love a person that had a pony? It might not look like Bakugan Gen 3 has a pony yet, despite Drago, Nilius, and Trox all returning. And I think it's fine to give the character a little bit of a break, but Spin Master owns Pegatrix, and they could bring her back at any time. And I think they should. I want to see that pony spin! Also, let's see if you can name the 11 female Bakugan that I didn't put in this video. Post any that you can remember in the comments. Please help to support my channel and watch exclusive videos on my Patreon, patreon.com slash jetcuso. Click the link in the description and give it a look. Thank you for watching, this is jetcuso, and I'll see you next time. Thank you to my Diamond Patrons, Immortal Blank, and Chuka Bear, my Titan Patrons, She Vitis, Sierra 107, Gusano, Logan Hill, Big Chunk of 69, Razu Ryan, Pleco Pleco, Roman Lewandowski, Ice Feather, and a brand new Titan Patron, Banana Jones, who seems like a pretty cool guy. Hyper Patrons, thank you so much, Gavin Greenlee, David, Trouble, Dusk Anthro, Midorios, Lucid Lana, and Zephyr. And, as well, we've got two new base patrons, Derek Bangle and Chaos Warrior. Thanks for joining, everybody!